In Molly of Denali, the lead character is Alaska Native. What are the origins of this character? So she has a family tree that's pretty broad. She lives in the base of Denali in a, a fictitious town called Kaya. The land of Denali is the land of the Denaina Ina people. So she's Denaina, she's Koyakan Athabaskan, she's Gwich'in. And so she has this breadth of cultural traditions of the interior of Alaska that she draws from. And that region uh, of the interior is very different from like the coastal region of Sitka or the, where the Klinka, what we would call Northwest Coast style art. Um, that's more on the coastal plain. And then up north, we have more of the Inupiaq and the Gwich'in areas more in the middle with the Athabascan peoples. And then Yupik is all the way on the Western coast. So we have uh, so many different languages and cultural histories and then dialects within each of those language across Alaska. So Molly has a bit of a historical composite of a variety of different cultural backgrounds that she draws from. And then the people around her instruct her more about their own traditions around the state as well. What is your favorite part about Molly, the character herself? Well, I love how curious she is. She's very, um, she asks a lot of questions and she does her own research. She answers her own questions. And sometimes the form of answering those questions is by oral history. She asks elders or she'll ask people around her community about information. There is one example in the name um, in the name game where she's trying to, she wants to get, she wants her own native name. And so she realizes that all of the people around her have native names that she doesn't know. And so she creates this sort of book, a, a, a reference guide to everybody, what their names are, who gave them their name, what does their name mean? And the book gets incorporated into the library in Kaya because there hadn't been a resource like that before. So her curiosity and her inquisitiveness guides her to finding the answers to these questions. Sometimes she goes online, but sometimes she has to look through photographs. She asks for adults to help her oftentimes, and then oftentimes she just forms her own ideas and finds out kind of the hard way maybe about whether or not her ideas were right. Um, and so through those adventures, you just, she's so endearing. Um, even when she doesn't get the answer quite the way she expected, there's always a little bit of a laugh at the end to, as she figures it out. And tell us how culture and story are being celebrated. So many aspects of the show have been taken directly from elders' personal stories. So example of Grandpa's Drum, which is the first episode that I was able to work with and work on, that comes from our elder Luke Titus, who is from Minto, right out, uh, about 45 miles outside of Fairbanks. And in that community where he grew up, his story of having to leave his community to go to boarding school, having lost his language, having lost his music, um, that's really his story, which is brought into Molly of Denali as sort of the story of Grandpa Nat. And there are other guiding pieces that are of been taken directly from community members, from elders that have gotten incorporated into Molly's fabric of her life. And that cultural storytelling has expanded to being able to share those stories then with a much bigger audience. And that authenticity then gives it this deeper soul of resonance that people can identify with. I had a friend come to me who said, you know, her family was refugees. And they said, this is just like my family because our photographs are so important to us because it's the old world that we never got to go back to. Those sorts of guiding principles from these stories of Alaska, I think will resonate with viewers from so many different backgrounds because there's always that, you know, people ha share their stories because it gives us a sense of who we are as people, but also helps us develop empathy for what other people have gone through. And uh, definitely within this series, I think you'll get a taste of that from Alaska. And can you explain how, what the value is in sharing the story or how this connects through the storytelling? You know, Molly's a vlogger. So her entire purpose is to share her adventures with people. She has her little phone out. She has her computer. She's building her own story. And as she builds her own story, it enables any other child to write their own story as well.
So she's not dependent on the stories that other people have told her. She's not dependent on just understanding herself in somebody else's form. She's creating her own story. She's telling us her own story in her own words as we watch her. And that self-expression, that self-autonomy and sovereignty, really, of who she is, is really a form of visual sovereignty. She's developing who she's going to be as we watch her unfold day to day. And that, as subtle as it may be for a child to recognize, puts the power of self-expression in anybody's hands. Anyone can tell their own story and develop it how they want to. And what Molly shares is very funny. She shows herself all covered with chicken feathers and mud, right? She doesn't just show um, her best days. She doesn't just show the best part of her life. She's showing her whole story. And she's very free about that. And there is a real beauty of being able to get that. And as she talks to other people, she learns more about her environment as she navigates. And what do you hope to achieve as a filmmaker and educator? You know, Molly is actually kind of a culmination of a lot of my goals as both a filmmaker and an educator. I um, was exported to Alaska from New Mexico about 20 years ago. And um, as I was working in film, I really came to the very strong feeling that there were a lot of beautiful stories that were not my right to tell. And so as a producer, I've been very interested and focused on trying to make sure that the right people were there to tell their own stories in their own way, in their own language, in whatever format they wanted to, and had the tools. So as an educator, my goal has been to help initiate that capacity building. And then as a filmmaker, being able to continually learn and understand the possible ways of visual expression, not just one format for one audience, but really be able to open ourselves up for a lot of different ways of expression. Um, Molly is a beautiful combination of all of those things for me personally, as well as academically and for our students. So um, this type of work is really what I've aimed to do for the last 10, 15 years, which is help to tell stories from Alaska that are authentic, that feel like people um, honor them and are excited for them and can't wait to see the next thing. So I, there's so many people that have worked on this series for Molly of Denali. I'm just one of many. And so many people have put their heart and soul into it. I'm just grateful to be one of them.